Welcome on God's Peace to you. I'm Pastor Zachariah Shippen. And I'm Pastor Emily Shipman. We serve the Northwest United Lutheran Parish in the towns of Crosby, Ambrose, Alamo, and Wild Rose, North Dakota. It is our prayer as you watch this video that you would hear God's word for your life today and that your faith in God will grow. May you come to know God's love for you more and more each day. First reading is from Lamentations, the third chapter. A reading from Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may, be, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians verse 8, or 7 through 15, a reading from 2 Corinthians. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may, may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who has much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. The gospel. The Gospel today comes from Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he 
saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better. She, rather, she grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from that leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they had said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the, father of, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child isn't dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside. He took the child's father and mother and those that were with him and went in to where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. And at this, at this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Okay. Today's reading, um, I see desperation, frustration, hope, exaltation. There's just a ton of emotions going on with this. But I think the thing at the very end is equality. It doesn't matter if you're that woman who is nobody in that society or you are Jarius and you are probably one of the most important people in that society. God had time for everyone. So here we are, um, this lady. She had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. That's 4,280 days. That's a long, long time. And you can imagine the personal hygiene products were not available to her as they are to people today. Uh, at that time, she would have been seen as unclean. She would have been treated as a pariah. Um, somewhere I read that she no longer had a husband, no family. She was alone, totally alone, totally shunned by society because of her affliction. And she'd gone to many, many doctors. And, and you can only imagine, in that time, the technology that was not there. She probably suffered horribly with what they tried to do to cure her. So she was a wreck, physically, mentally, emotionally. She was at her wit's end, didn't know what to do. And all of a sudden, here she hears that Jesus is coming. Well, maybe, maybe, just maybe, she had a little limp glimmer of hope. If I, if I can even just touch his robe, maybe I can be healed. Well, so she gathers with all the others when he comes over. But all of a sudden, Jarius is, is demanding with, with good reason that Jesus should come and try to heal his 12-year-old daughter. 
So they're on their way to Jarius' house. And I'm sure she's going, do I dare? Am I worthy? I, should I do this? Are they going to get mad at me? You know, what's going to happen to me? And finally, with her desperation, she just went up there and she touched his robe. And immediately she felt healed. Now, like, they, like the disciples said, there were people everywhere. How would he know, how would he differentiate between her touching his robe and everybody else? Because you know jostling around that he'd been touched by others. But he did notice. He knew that something had happened. And so he calls this lady forward. And she's, I can only imagine how scared she must have been. You know, how was she going to be ridiculed by everyone? How can you bother someone like you bother Jesus when he's on an important mission like this? And he turns around and says to her, be healed. She was healed physically when she touched his robe. But when Jesus said be healed, he healed her emotionally, mentally, in every way. So she was totally whole again because she was as important as that 12-year-old little girl. And he knew, he knew that, that everything was going to be okay. He knew that the little girl was only sleeping and that he could, he could help her. But he, he spent as much time with the so-called pariah as he did with maybe one of the most important children in that area. So to me, as short as this is, uh, that is what our gospel is saying to us today. Everyone is important in God's eyes. Never feel like you are inferior, because God sees all of us. It's just as important as anyone else. And I know that's hard at times, because I was thinking on the way up here, I thought, how can we think that God has as much compassion for a serial killer as he does a saint. But he does. He loves every one of us equally. He has time for every one of us equally. And it's okay for us to ask for his help when we need it. Again, short, but I hope this is a nice lesson. Amen. We would love to have you join us sometime for worship. Here is our parish worship schedule and our contact information. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.